reading from our gospel text. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. For those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit, fruit on it and found none. He said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. If it should bear fruit the next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Well, we often find our Lord Jesus Christ using parables such as this uh, as far as fruit, gathering fruit, limbs being grafted, also, of course, the rod or reed sprout of Jesse. But in this text, Christ is not necessarily talking about himself, of course. He's talking about those who bear no fruit. And at first, this parable, well, I'll put it this way. There's a reason why this parable is not the most recognizable parable. If I said, do you know the parable of the sower? You could pick it up like that, I'm sure. The parable uh, of, of uh, 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 the, the, the wedding, you could pick up pretty quickly on that one. Or the parable of the vineyard, or well, I guess all the parables of the vineyard. You can pick them up rather quickly. But if I said, tell me the parable of the fig tree, you would say, I'm not sure. It's because the impact of the parable of the fig tree doesn't at, at face value seem like much to us. That is, it doesn't seem like it carries much weight until you really actually dig into it and you look first at the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that the Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. Truly, we are all sinners and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And yet, there are expectations of a Christian. The Christian life, for example, there are expectations. There are expectations that are absolutely ridiculous and then there are expectations that are meant to be held by God for a solid confession in Christ Jesus. For example, we can walk out today and walk into the world and see that everyone has an expectation of a Christian. And their expectation of a Christian is usually a moral expectation. That is, Christians are by nature good people. We help the little old lady across the street. Christian is the Boy Scout on steroids. Being a Christian means that we have no real problems in life. We're just here to be good. And then everybody knows, of course, if you're good, your fruit is good, and if you're a good boy or a good girl, you go to heaven. Now, 
when you hear me say it like that, it sounds stupid. And that's because it is stupid. Because regardless of what the movies may tell you, not all dogs go to heaven. Believe me when I say this, the fruit that is produced in you is not produced by you, but is produced to despite you. The fruit that is brought about from the ground and from the roots absorbed into the vine, all of that is from Christ Himself through the Holy Spirit speaking life into you that you would bear good fruit and that that fruit would be consumed and that its seeds would spread further and further and further. You see, I think we make a mistake when we stop at just the fruit. It's important that I, that I produce good fruit. As the fig tree, I should produce good fruit. And once I produce good fruit, I've done my job. Completely forgetting about the ones who actually eat the fruit. What about those who hear your words? What about those who bite and break the skin of the fig tree? Will your fruit be sour or will it be sweet? Will it be full of the juice in which Satan tempted Eve or shall it be filled with the blood of Christ? When we ask these questions, I ask these questions. Because I do not want you to be haughty. I do not want you to go out and say, I am a Christian, therefore I produce good fruit. And the end result of being a Christian is to produce good fruit. And once I have produced good fruit, my job is done. Because at the end of the day, if that's what we believe, if that's what we think, then we are truly not believing in Christ, but we are believing in ourselves. We're just claiming God's fruit as our own. And yet there's this one fig tree who was planted and there was a vine master or a vineyard master whose job it was to help this fig tree produce fruit. And for three years, the master who only the vineyard and the fig tree would come and would see that there is no fruit. And he would say, cut it down. In other words, kill it. For it has no fruit and it serves no purpose. But then the man answers him, sir, let it alone this year. And what I will do, I will dig around the fig tree and I will place manure or nutrients there at the fig tree. And then if the fig tree absorbs the nutrients and produces fruit, then good. If it doesn't, then cut it down. <coughs> Burn it. Be done with it. And so I today in front of you, God and all of you witnesses, say this. There are many fig trees that stand in the midst of the garden and don't produce fruit. It is not our job to point at that fig tree and say, produce fruit, darn you, produce fruit. Look at all the fruit I got. Don't you want to be fruitful like me? No. My job as the pastor and your job as Christians is to dig out the earth, place the nutrient, the Word of God, close to the root system of the fig. And if that fig grows faith and grows fruit, very well. If it does not, it has chosen itself 
to take no nutrients, so let it be cut down. And these words are harsh because the reality of the words, and I speak now not in parables, but I simply say this, you will know Christians by their fruit, or you will know them by their fruit, not in good behavior, not fruit as in morality, not fruit as in uh, tastiness. You will know the Christian by the fruit of repentance. That's what the fruit is. The fruit is fruit of repentance. If you do not repent, you cannot be forgiven. If you do not repent, you will not be forgiven. In fact, Christ tells us here, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. And so I won't skirt around the, the issue. For the past two weeks, family in our congregation has been through hell. And they fought the good fight well. And I commend all of you. But I say this. Anyone who does not repent will likewise perish. Maybe just maybe the justice that was handed out was not as much as we would have wanted or liked. But here's the thing. It's not really our call. And this judge and this court, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Because unless assailants repent, they will likewise perish. But be mindful of yourselves as well. That you Repent unless you likewise perish. And so I say to you today, in keeping with the good fruit, repent of your sins and come and receive the merits of the true fruit, the true tree, not the tree that, were, that, that banished us into hell, but the tree of goodness the tree of life everlasting the tree that supported the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and from that fruit let us be fed so that we may bear fruit as well and again I say not the fruit that is succulent but the fruit that causes repentance. For we are all that fig tree. And we are all in need of pruning, or at least to have that dirt dug around and have the Word of God, the nutrients placed at our roots so that we may grow knowing and having a good confession of faith the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Those three things, and they agree. Repentance, forgiveness, and life everlasting. And so it is my hope that the, that the one who stands accused will repent. But here's the thing. We all stand accused. Repent. Trust that Christ will forgive your sins. And go on your way. Peacefully. Loving. Carefully. Knowing this. You may not think that you get the justice and the righteousness that you deserve on earth. But I promise you, you deserve much worse. But you are given so much more. 
and this is the truth of the words. I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, dear fig trees, dear vineyards, let us come forward for you are prepared to receive the fruit of Christ's truth.